Welcome. We are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We certainly would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And today I'm way excited because our guest is Leanne Tiemann, and she is a renowned speaker, nurse, author of numerous books, including the Chicken Soup for the Soul, Everyday Catholicism series, which is published by Sophia Institute Press. And those books are available at EWTNRC.com. And we are going to have an exciting conversation with Leanne. I'm excited yeah. to have her. And it's going to, you know, it, we did our Monday show, you yep. know, hearing God, seeing God in our everyday circumstances. He's real. He's there. Are we listening? Are we seeing? And we need to be praying, Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear, yeah. and then a heart to respond in pure love to all the nudgings yeah. of the day. Well, she's you know quite renowned already yes. with the chicken soup for the soul, various uh, books that have been written for various people and circumstances. But now, uh, for everyday Catholicism, chicken soup for the soul, everyday Catholicism. And again, the focus is what we were doing on Monday, God's action in our everyday life. And she shares hundreds of stories, powerful, beautiful stories. And I think this is so important for the building up of the faith at this time mm -hmm. and for evangelization that we can say, I know God is alive. And, and here's how, one of the ways I know that personally, I know he lives, he lives within my life. And you share that circumstance and situation. So we'll be hearing some of those stories with Leanne, but also we're gonna hear her story. Yes. And a big part of her story is being a part of the Vietnam uh, children's airlift out mm -hmm. of Vietnam during the war. And I think she went over there to get six children mm -hmm. and to bring them where they were supposed to be placed in America and winds up being involved with 300 children to get out of that terrible environment there, life-threatening environment, and then to settle them. How did it go from six to, to 300 and what was in that? What was it all about experiencing that time? And so she's going to share that mm -hmm. story because so much of her life and what she does now and sharing about God in everyday life evidently flows out of that impactful, incredible, dreadful, wonderful story of Vietnam. You know, um, God can bring good out of evil. He brings a blessing out of a curse. And he can bring life out of death. And that's Leanne's life. Mm -hmm. She's a nurse and she ministers to I said, well, are you currently nursing? So she said, well, no, not like that, but I ministered to thousands mm -hmm. of nurses through, so to speak, giving them chicken soup for their souls. So she has a whole ministry uh, to nurses. So we are just privileged to have Leanne with us. If you don't know her, you're going to get to know her today. And it's going to be a great blessing in your life. God's a great blessing in your life. May he give you eyes to see and ears to hear that he's nearer to you than you are to yourself. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and our guest today is Leanne Tiemann, and she is a renowned speaker, nurse, author of numerous books, including Chicken Soup for the Soul, Everyday Catholicism series, which is published by Sophia Institute Press, and it's available at EWTNRC.com. And I certainly hope you go out there and get those books because your soul will be blessed. You really will be blessed. They're little stories. I mean, Leanne had to read hundreds, thousands of stories to get them in the book. But they're wonderful stories that are going to encourage you along life's journey. So don't miss out on that. Go there and get them. Mm. Lee, and I'm too excited to have you here on At Home with Jim and Joy. And your story is exciting. And I can't believe it. And I want you so to tell it to our family. So tell our family your beautiful story. <laughs> well, and actually, um, it, it, all of this began in 1975 
when I was a mom and a wife and had two beautiful daughters and a volunteer for Friends of Children of Vietnam uh, out of my basement in Iowa. That was a chapter headquarters. We put drop boxes in grocery stores and raised money, sent five tons of supplies to Vietnam in just three years. So that's when the national headquarters called and asked if I would agree to fly to Vietnam and escort six babies, six, mm -hmm. back to their pre-assigned adoptive homes. Well, between the day I said yes, I would go, and the day before I left, the bombing went from one mile out of Saigon <laughs> to right outside the city limits. Mm. And so on the a day before I left, I heard that the, well, the bombing was there and I was terrified. I didn't want to go anymore. Mm -hmm. And it happened that that day was Easter Sunday. You're there and on site. I, I was, uh, yes, I was still home on Easter Sunday okay. debating on whether I should go or mm -hmm. not because I just heard the bombs were outside. Right. So after mass, Mark took the girls downstairs for donuts <laughs> and I knelt alone in the empty sanctuary mm -hmm. begging God for a sign I didn't have to go. Mm -hmm. And instead, I was just filled with this courage and this conviction, this absolute certainty. Of course I'd go, I'd be back. Mm -hmm. I never would have left them. Mm -hmm. And God would take care of me. And so completely faith-filled and confident the next morning, <laughs> I kissed my little girls goodbye, walked out of Mark's arms, boarded a 747, headed for Saigon. And when I landed, I knew why I got the message at Easter Sunday mm -hmm. because I was greeted with, have you heard the news? Mm -hmm. Last night, President Gerald Ford okayed Operation Baby Lift. You won't help us take out six babies, you'll help us take out 300. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew I was on assignment, mm -hmm. <laughs> one bigger yes. than me. Mm -hmm. wow. What a beautiful <clears throat> mission. And so all those babies that you were airlifting out, they were going to pre-assigned homes that were already set up for them to be adopted into. Right. As a matter of fact, my husband and Mark and I were one of those families that had mm -hmm. been pre, hopefully, we're mm -hmm. on a list. Mm -hmm. uh, we expected to have a son um, through Friends of Children of Vietnam in two or three years. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of my motivation in saying yes, thinking one day he would be happy to know that his mom had been to his homeland. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Explain to us what, what that means actually to airlift them out. You know, how does that work? What's your part in it? You know, are you just getting them on a plane? Do you go with them? I, I, what are the elements to Good this? Good question. Well, I went, when we arrived there, I went into this two-story center for Friends of Children of Vietnam that just housed usually 10 babies. And you may even have some pictures because when I got there, every inch of the floor was covered with a baby. Mm. And I went upstairs and there were hundreds more babies because they were bringing them in from all of our foster homes. Mm. The, we could hear the bombs dropping sometimes and the building was shaking and we were one of the headquarters. So people were just bringing children in, mm. many of them Amerasian, half American, half Asian, mm. and they were doomed there. So they, it was just frantic as people were bringing all these babies in and depositing them with us and a lot of the foster moms stayed to help care for them. And then on the fi fifth and final day I was there, it was our turn. And so we um, literally went to the airport. You saw the picture earlier I saw on the screen of me in a van with 22 babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that was part of the trip to the airport. And um, when we arrived there, um, there was a C-141 cargo jet with 22 cardboard boxes side by side. I helped load two to three babies and placed them in an open cardboard box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then believing in seatbelt safety, we took a strap from one end of the plane over the 22 boxes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and nine of us helped take care of 100 babies as far as the Philippines um, when we waited for more. <laughs> my gosh, you must have been exhausted. I mean, <laughs> how, did anybody sleep in that time? No. Mm. Oh, but it was pretty wonderful work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, yeah. the passage keeps coming up. You know, unless you humble yourself and become like a child, you'll not inherit the kingdom of God. Right. And what a, what a demanding thing, frightening thing, but what a privilege the Lord had given you to care for him in oh. those children. Mm. Overwhelming, but there's God, you know, right in your life. Tell God your plans, you'll hear him laugh. So you, you, you're courageous, it's wonderful to do something with six children, like 300, like really? Like what do, <laughs> what do we do? Do you know what you're doing, Lord? I don't know if you want to say that. Um, so do you know any follow-up stories with any of these children? Uh, well, I there? have a great follow-up story. On, uh, I have two follow-up stories now that you mention it. <laughs> uh, the first was on the third day I was there, the director said, Leanne, because your name is on the list, you're, and your husband Mark 
will be assigned one of the 100 babies we have gathered here. Or you can walk into the next room and choose a son. Mm -hmm. And I walked into that room of 100 babies and there was a little nine-month-old boy standing across the room next to a crib. He took one look at me, mm. got down on his hands mm. and knees, crawled into my arms, my heart, and our family, and we had a son. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. That's a beautiful story. It is a beautiful story, mm -hmm. which is another reason, another part of my divine assignment, right? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then to answer your other question, on the 25th um, anniversary of Operation Baby Lift, I went to a, a reunion and got to meet 100 of the young men and women many of whom I helped to bring out. And it was How just, overwhelming it was that? It was just amazing. Oh and were they dispersed throughout the country? All over the world. All over the world. Australia, the world. Great Britain, mm -hmm. Germany, United mm -hmm. States, Canada. Through that agency? Through our, our agency, mm -hmm. yes. Wow. Mm. What beautiful leaven all over the world mm -hmm. in those yes. children and the yes. stories. It's an amazing, amazing thing. Um, how does that lead into you know, kind of the, the work that you're doing. I mean, how did that lead into your desire to write or to share stories, the power of the story? Well, that's the interesting thing. I had no desire to write or <laughs> speak and or tell stories. And I went about my life merrily with my fantastic husband, Mark, now of 51 years. Praise the Lord. And, mm -hmm. and I do every day. Mm -hmm. um, praise the Lord for that. At merrily raising our three children. And when Mitch, our son, was a senior in high school, I knew it was time to tell the story. Um, even he didn't know it, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how to write, so I just took every writing retreat and class wow. and workshop and mentorship and bought the books and learned to write a true personal story, and my own story got in chicken soup for the mother's soul mm -hmm. about getting Mitch, and wow. then I, I just loved writing stories, sending them to chicken soup, and that's when Jack Canfield called and asked if I would co-author chicken soup for the nurse's soul with him, which mm -hmm. started me on my chicken soup journey, so I've written 14 of, of the chicken 14. soup books. Yeah. And then um, organizations wanted me to talk about the lessons I learned from Operation Baby Lift. And I wrote a speech and wrote a book and built a career mm -hmm. on um, balancing lives in your war zones. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to be strong of mind, body, and spirit to survive in the war zones of our everyday lives. And I often say God took me kicking and screaming into a completely new career, <laughs> which yeah. I am so privileged to be a part of today. Yeah. So y your, your real heart cry is for nurses, right? So tell our family, I mean, you're 30 years a nurse, and what, what, what is your heart cry for nurses as they do this great battle cry that they're about? <laughs> well, thank you. Even before the horrific pandemic, Nurses uh, were having tremendous burnout. I call it drained out. Mm -hmm. They're not burned, they're just drained and we need to mm -hmm. refill their wells. And so that is my, I know that is my mission, that to teach them very simple tools to care for their minds, bodies, and spirits every day. So I write books and articles. Now I have a year long program called Self Care for Health Care for mm -hmm. hospitals to invest so that they can really give the nurses their tools. And I'm so blessed because I get to tell people to pray every day. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> yeah. So your website is selfcareforhealthcare.com. That's correct. Great. Wow, what, what a juncture in history to be doing this work. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we often hear, well, sometimes, you know, doctors are the worst in assessing themselves and getting treatment. I don't know if it's the same for nurses or not. You know, they're caring for everybody, doing everything, but then when it comes to them, caring for themselves, assessing themselves and what's going on, it sounds like it's a difficult thing for them to do. So you're kind of igniting a flame under them and saying, you know, we know there's no problem with you remembering others. There's a problem possibly with remembering yourself. You're exactly right, Jim. I often tell them they are so altruistic and they're busy taking care of everybody else that they put themselves last. Mm -hmm. And what we're really doing is giving them permission uh, to take a really good care of themselves first. Well, and that, that is true with moms, too, right? Absolutely. They're the worst. I mean, I always tell my daughters, self-care, you know, one daughter has eight, the other one has four, they're working, they're both busy, and it's like, what, it, what are you doing for yourself? And I know as, as a, when we were raising our children, I would have to get up intentionally 
at five just so I could have quiet time with the Lord because when the children come down, there was no time. Right. 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 And so you have to, you have to, it's a train, it's a discipline to say, this is how I'm going to get fed because God is going to require much from me today. And in order for me to give you anything good, <laughs> I need to be with him alone. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And too often we neglect that. Again, because we're so busy caring for others that we neglect our own spiritual self-care. And I often tell people just 15 minutes a day. Right. Or, okay, 10 minutes a day. Right. Just to be still and know that I am God and can and connect with him for the divine guidance. Well, we certainly enjoyed these great books. And um, tell us some of your favorite stories. Gosh, there are so many because mm -hmm. there's like a uh, hundred um, in them all together. Uh, one that I, I really loved was called um, Mother to Mother. And it, when you talked about your daughters, it made me think about that. That this woman said that her daughter had just had a baby and they took the baby to see the Christmas lights. And much to her surprise, the next day her daughter became gravely ill with spinal meningitis and got increasingly sick. Mm -hmm. And um, they called the priest to give the sacrament of the sick. And um, she then went into an intensive care. And the lady said it was near Christmas time and every day she walked by the crèche at her house. She would play, pray to the Blessed Mother. You watched your son suffer and die. Mm -hmm. Please be my intercessor and spare me of that and help me spare my daughter's life. So indeed, they gave her the sacrament of the sick, and at the time it was called last rites because all of her system organs were failing. And the afternoon after she got that sacrament, she started to blink, and her fingers mm -hmm. wiggled, and mm -hmm. she came back to life mm -hmm. and recovered completely. And she ends the story by say, thanking the Blessed Mother for being my intercessor and preventing me from having to endure the suffering that, that you did. Yes, yes. So, beautiful, yes. powerful. Tell us, uh, you've written how many uh, chicken soup books? It's like 12, you said? Right. Okay, and, but you got four now that are especially designed for Sophia Press Institute. We got two of them, Hearing God's Answers in Our Lives, Seeing God's Action in Our Lives. So four books. Tell us about this project, how it came about, that you would kind of tailor it to the Catholic right. um, view way. Chicken Soup with the Soul is published by a secular publishing company and yet they had hired me to write Chicken Soup with the Soul Living Catholic Faith. Mm -hmm. And when we did a call out for those stories, uh, like so many of the books, I read 2,000 stories mm -hmm. from Catholics wow. and chose the top 100. Many of them I help people rewrite. They say, I have a great story, I just don't know how to write it. Mm -hmm. And by the God, grace of God, I figured that out. Mm -hmm. So, um, And after that I called the publisher and said, we got so many great stories here, we could write one that's just miracles. So we wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul, a book of miracles. And then I said, we have so many great stories, we could write Chicken Soup for the Soul, answered prayers. Mm. So then what Sophia um, Press did is they mm -hmm. took those three Chicken Soup for the Soul books and published a book of four in a series mm -hmm. for everyday Catholicism. Yeah. Well, they're, they're so rich, and I really encourage our family at home to get them because, you know, they're, they're little short stories that are so enriching. It's not like you're going to be in this in-depth relationship with this person. It's a quick story. It reads fast, but it fills your faith. It right? Does. It does. And, and that's the point because, you know, you want to say go through this and stories that you could tell your grandchildren. You know, maybe your life isn't, you don't have a story to tell. Well, you all really do have a story to tell. You just have to realize it and, and to share it and to tell it. We love, we were laughing last night. We were read the one, uh, St. Anne, St. Anne, send me a man, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and how beautiful that was and then how the grandmother tells it to get specific and then she gets specific and then she goes down the list and God sent her a man. Right? I mean, it was wonderful. But, but, and I loved it because that wouldn't appear anywhere but only in a Catholic one, right? Because right. who knows St. Anne? No, Nobody right. even knows St. Anne. Catholics don't even know that St. Anne was Jesus' grandmother, right? Right. And so we get to tell that story. <clears throat> so hopefully our Catholic family at home is going to drink it up and say, I need this, especially coming out of COVID, right? right? Isn't it right. a time for such as this? Right, right, to fill our souls mm -hmm. again. I, before I did it for a living, <laughs> I suggested, and I did, I read one chicken soup for the soul story mm -hmm. every night before I turned the light out. Mm -hmm. And it just filled my soul and my heart yeah. with um, all, the, all the goodness in the world. And there's so much goodness, and God's goodness is so apparent if we pay attention. Mm -hmm. And that's what these stories do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. thank you so much. We look forward to continuing tomorrow and to hear more about seeing God's action in our daily lives, chicken soup for the soul. 
everyday Catholicism. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. We are at home with Jim and Joy, and now we bring to you Father John Paul. Well, Father, what did you think of Leanne's beautiful sharing about her books? I can, I can always tell when uh, it's going to be a great show because you can just see how uh, Leanne clicked with mm -hmm. you two, mm -hmm. talking about uh, the gift of human life. Yeah. And I know you two, there's nothing more that, that you love than the gift of human life. Mm -hmm. You love and cherish and try and safeguard and protect human life mm -hmm. every day of your life. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, I love Chicken Soup, yes. not just the book uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chicken Soup in the series, but there's nothing gr greater than a warm bowl of chicken mm -hmm. soup. Uh, there's a Mexican re restaurant down the street that has the best chicken soup. Uh -huh. <laughs> so just the title alone, uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, is great and it's extraordinary. Working, it's right? attractive mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to people. Um, and it reminded me just Leanne sharing her presentation and her witness and her story of uh, my own mother and she's a nurse too, mm -hmm. and I talk about her all the time, so mm -hmm. it uh, can never get exhausting, I think. Um, and she would constantly come home and talk about stories um, of her encounters with people, and I would just like to share one mm -hmm. chicken soup for the soul from mm -hmm. Debbie. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, when I was in seminary, she said, um, there's a wow out there for everybody, and this is her story. Uh, she went, she was at the nurse's station and somebody was dying and my mom always had a sense when somebody was going to die. She mm -hmm. went back to the room and uh, the guy's daughter was at the room and, and he was about ready to, you know, dying and she couldn't figure out why, why is this guy holding on? Mm -hmm. So my mom took her brown scapular and she asked the lady, she, um, you know, does your father wear the brown scapular? Mm -hmm. And so he put the, my mom put the brown scapular wow. on this guy yeah. over his neck. And within like a minute, the guy stood straight up in the bed and mm. said, wow. Mm. And he fell back and died. Mm. So there's a promise about wearing the brown scapular that you will not die without uh, wearing it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the guy mm -hmm. didn't have it on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my mom put hers on the guy mm -hmm. and the guy, I don't know what he saw, but yeah. my mom right. told me, you know, way back 20 years ago, there's a wow waiting for yeah. you. That's wow. the story. Very, wow, very that's powerful. a great story. I tried to tell it very quickly. No, <laughs> that's a great did. story, Father. No, he did great. And, yeah. you know, it's a mystery and we can't figure everything out with that. But certainly there's some kind of sign there. That's sure. a, There is a connection here. There's supernatural power in the midst of the natural thing that's going on. And these, these stories that are not made up stories, they're real stories for me, mm. you know, are just saying God's alive, God's active, God's in this, God's here, God has the final word. And we need to share these stories. Yeah, I've heard uh, constant stories from my mom about stories about how God intervenes. She talked about the sacrament of the sick. Um, mm -hmm. My mom is a firm mm -hmm. believer in the anointing of the sick, and she mm -hmm. would always bring in a priest mm -hmm. uh, to yeah. share that with, with souls that were preparing for eternal life. Father, close this out in a prayer and with a blessing, please. Sure. Family, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face to you and be merciful to you. May he show you his kindness and give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Chicken soup for the soul. Everyday Catholicism, a four-book series from Sophia Press Institute. Our Lord says, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. He'll take every evil and turn it to a good. He'll take the curse and turn it into a blessing. He will take death and he'll turn that into life. You're an important part of this family. You're never alone and you're always at home with Jim and with joy. Bye now. <laughs>